Well, last year the government released a new scheme to make property rentals more affordable for some. And this week David wrote to ask about that scheme. He says, I'm interested in the National Rental Affordability Scheme. As you're probably aware, the scheme seeks to address the shortage of affordable rental housing by offering financial incentives to the business sector and community organisations to build and rent dwellings for low and moderate income households at 20% below market rates for 10 years. I was wondering your thoughts of this program as an investment. Now, Michael, you have a little bit of an understanding of the National Rental Affordability Scheme. What can you advise, David? Um, Margaret, I think the NRAS scheme is a good scheme. Um, but I'd, I'd say to David, David, you've really got to look at the investment property itself and ask yourself whether you would buy that property in any event. Um, I think anything done um, f purely for the purposes of accessing um, any form of uh, incentive from government or or someone who's trying to sell you a property indeed, is something that you should be very cautious about. NRAS itself, I think, is a scheme that has um, a, a very good design. I think it's a long-term scheme. It's designed to keep um, rentals below market for people that are, are looking for affordable housing. And certainly we need um, some form of government stimulus and involvement in rental housing uh, in, in this country particularly whilst we don't have institutional investment in residential property. So I think NRAS is an interesting scheme um, with, with admirable um, objectives. Um, I know it's being reviewed at the moment by some of the community housing associations to see whether it's actually delivering um, lower cost rental properties for, for people and not having an artificial effect on the market. But I would urge you, David, to, to look at the investment on its own merits. Um, before deciding and if the if it stacks up on that front and the NRAS is a benefit then so be it. Michael you and I have often talked about any kind of a scheme that's mm. offered with any kind of an investment mm. property be it a rental guarantee yeah. um, NRAS is essentially another tax advantage scheme for yeah. the investor any other kind of a benefit that's being offered does, can't change a bad investment into a good one Correct. and the underlying asset mm. has to stack up under the criteria for sound investing um, and just like uh, Defence Force Housing I'm often asked about that that as well. It's just another rental guarantee. Um, sometimes the underlying asset is in an area that is right for investing and other times it's not yeah. and therefore it should be steered from. So it really comes down to the asset more than the scheme. Correct. Somebody has to look at that investment property, ask the questions, does this stack up and is it going to be a good one to buy? Interestingly enough, with the National Rent of Rental Affordability Scheme, when it was first delivered to the market, it was designed purely purely for institutional investors. Yeah. So superannuation funds and large bodies that wanted to build uh, properties of 100 dwellings or more. The initial aim was that the tax benefits could not be passed on to individual investors. But what actually happened was nobody was watching the shop. A lot of them were developed, mm. sold to individual investors. Suddenly they were caught between a rock and a hard place. And it was only about six months ago that the government came out and said that they would make interim arrangements for people who'd been caught under that um, and I don't think a decision's actually been made no. yet whether they're I, going to change that. I think uh, there are some private rulings have been applied for mm -hmm. but I'm not aware of any outcomes from those applications at this point in yeah, time. No, I'm not either. Yeah. Uh, I think people I, really need to be careful of it. Yeah and I look I think to the extent that it was encouraging um, institutional investment in residential property, then I think that's a, a very, very admirable thing for the government to be doing. It's something that this country needs desperately. Mm. Um, and um, the sooner we get to that, the better for everyone, I think. But, um, but certainly those that have jumped on board with it, um, adapted the, the you know, the process is entered into joint venture arrangements, I think is the way it's done. That is how and, it's done. And, um, and that, you know, really, there's a question mark over whether that changes the fundamental mm. entitlement to the benefit. Mm. Ben, I don't know if you've seen any of these, but I got a lot of investors who were writing to me about them when they were looking at buying I them. I do too. And th they all wrote to me and said, look, I'm looking at buying these. And initially, I couldn't work out how they were able to do it. And I was writing back and saying, you can't, you're an individual and they're not available to individuals. Mm. And then one of them sent me the contract and I realised it was actually a JV, a joint venture yep. agreement. And that is different altogether than, than entering into a contract to buy 
different property. Totally different. I think one of the things, I mean, going back to the basics, anyone who's promoting these type of schemes, understand what's in it for them. You know, um, I always say if you can get independent advice about these type of uh, schemes or investment schemes, I'm, I'm a big believer that tax shouldn't be a driver for anyone's investment outcomes as well. So I think from that point of view, I think we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. So be very, very careful of any kind of scheme like this one that is going to result in you undertaking something that you're not quite sure of always find out from your accountant or a tax expert who does know whether or not it's suitable for your personal circumstances and of course do the research on the underlying asset to make sure that you're buying in an area that really does stack up for investing purposes. Well the questions have been great so far but there hasn't been enough of them yet. Now I know I've been away for a couple of weeks but I'm back now so get on the phone and give us a call straight away. We're going off for a very short break but we're going to be back so if you do have a question give us a call now on 1300 30 or of course you can always email us at property at skynews.com.au